Thank you, Peter Bean, for being on With Miska podcast. Thank you for having me. You did it. You put it because it's crazy. I often tr- put it on front of that, but it actually burns. It gets gets too light. Oh, okay. The so, light. I've never had my name on a slate for a podcast. It's weird. Like I'm usually doing a film where I see that. This is weird because you're. F- well, podcasts are the film of twenty twenty two. Yes. That's not your coffee, is it? No. We can give it out. Okay. But you, if you want some. No, I'm okay. Yes. Thank you. No, no, this is uh, this is it. This is good enough. Okay. You know, I can You know, I expect professionalism here. You know, I'm big deal, Miska. I know. You're the biggest deal I've I've ever known. Uh, well, we've known each other a long time. I know. Just before we before we go to that, you're completely safe. So if you want something cut, I can cut later. Okay. So no worries like that. Okay. No worries about saying something wrong and Yes. Yeah. Okay. Seventeen yeah. years. Yeah. But but uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Seven Yep. And we moved here to Los Angeles two thousand and five. Right. Two thousand five. Um Well, let me think. So you, well, so we, yeah, you, you came right. I I came like a few months before you, right? Yes. And then you came and then we were roommates for at least a year, right? No, more than a year. More than a year. Because I had a, no more than a year. Oh. Well, actually you're right. We moved here in uh, about May, April. Yeah. April. April. And then I had. April 1st. Oh, was it like that? Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. So I had um, one year work permit, and then I needed to mm, go back to Finland in August. Yeah, so that was, year and a few months. Yeah, that was the that was the trick of because uh, we were in uh, in Miami. We we went to international school. Um, I didn't, but you, you did. Yeah, right. You you acted in a lot of our films. Uh, yes, and that's how we met. Um, and and the trick of coming to LA with 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 that group of. Uh, talented people all their well not all of them a bunch of them uh, had visa issues as well like they they had to leave for a little bit or 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 stay and do school or something so so yeah it it was tricky but it was a lot of fun i mean i i've got i've got so much dirt on you miska i I know i could i could tell everybody no it it was fun i i think yeah so you're saying i should not edit this I don't think you should edit this. No, Not this sounds part. good. <laughs> no, I, I won't. I won't say anything. No, we we were fine. We weren't. You know, we we were all art, we're all artists. We were we're all, we're all artists at that house, and we had over the course of living there, several actors lived there with us, filmmakers, and so we weren't all like party animals. You know, we weren't like Animal House or anything. Um, we had occasions uh, where we would drink, of course, but like, there's not a lot of weird stuff. So, you know, right? Okay, I don't know if you. Had no, answer. that's no, that's good. There's not a lot, <laughs> lots. Yeah, but we so we so in Miami, um, for me at least, uh, you acted in my first independent short film, and I say short film. I mean that was like in the end it was almost 40 minutes long. So it was almost a feature, basically. My struggle. My struggle. And you shot it on film. On 35 millimeter film. And we got short ends from, um, uh, from, uh, not Fuji. Um, oh my God. What's the, uh, you can edit this part out, but uh, what is, what is the, uh, Technicolor? No. Kodak. Kodak. Thank you. Kodak. Um, uh, we got uh, short ends from Kodak and our documentary film teacher had a big 35 millimeter camera. Can you explain what short ends are? Short ends. So when you're, when you're making a a big film, you're shooting on 35 millimeter, you shoot a scene and you have a little bit of the end of the reel. Uh, And sometimes it's not just a little bit, but those big productions, they want, they want a lot of, uh, time to work with. So they want to switch reels. So they'll, uh, so they'll have reels with, with, um, film that was unused. So to, to us, you know, independent filmmakers, it's a lot. 
And so Kodak gave us um, a bunch of short ends, enough to do our film. And so we did it on 35. It looked amazing. Um, you could make the argument that obviously digital cameras now are just as amazing, but are you making that argument? I'm not. I mean, I, I'm not a, I'm not an authority enough to make the argument that digital is digital in, on the higher end cameras are definitely there as far as between 35 millimeter. But a lot of uh, people will say that there's something lost in the slight grain of a film of, of film um, uh, um, actual film and the blacks are, are the important element of, of, of uh, film versus digital, but digital has been able to push the blacks yeah. really well. Cause that was always digital's problem is the blacks don't look black. They had yeah. like a grayness to them, but now it's pretty good. But that that's the biggest thing is for film. Um, the blacks are black because it is, it is photo. It's a photo. So are, but what's your opinion? Well, as an independent filmmaker, digital, because it's cheaper. Yeah. I mean, the, the Kodak gave us those and that was cheap relatively, but a hassle to process uh, the film and, and everything like that. So there's from, you know, you can shoot digital in a little bit and then it's on your computer right away. So I don't think, I don't think there's a lot of comparison in the independent film group. If you're making Armageddon for, yeah, of course. Like maybe you, maybe you want to do film. So I don't know, but, but yeah, so we did, so we did my struggle. Can um, we see it anywhere? It's not on YouTube, <laughs> but I'll get it on YouTube. I'll, I haven't, um, I haven't, um, I haven't put that on cause for a little bit it was, uh, we were re-editing it and it was kind of, uh, uh, changing it a little bit and it got into some festivals. It got into, um, uh, well, no, it, I'm sorry. I was going to say con, but that was a different film. Um, it got into a bunch of really cool festivals and, uh, happy about that. Um, and, uh, but yes, I'll get it online. I, I need to, it's especially for you because you're, you're, uh, prominent in it. So, yes. Yeah. And then, but we, so we, and then you did, so I, I looked back in the stuff that we've done together and, um, uh, more recently, not so much, but of course, uh, but we did, um, uh, you did some e-entertainment commercials that, yes. I, that I, uh, tried to push on to them. Cause that's where I was working at the time. And, uh, uh, those, and then, um, and then of course the music video, uh, for T Timo, T Timo, the Timo Kamarainen. Yes. Yeah. John suitcase, John suitcase. I'm yeah. going to put the link up. Yeah. That, I, that's my, that's one of my favorite, uh, things that I've done. And, and that's the thing. I think as filmmakers, we get, some of us, myself included, get hung up on, uh, the, okay, we got to plan it out. Okay. What's the story? That stuff. Oftentimes when I'm pushed to just do it, um, it, it's beautiful. We, so we did that music video. We just, we had a camera, uh, Eric Claw, uh, our colleague, and I, I co-direct with him a lot and I help and I produce some of the stuff he does. And, um, we just went around downtown at like midnight, midnight to like 3am or something. We, you, myself, uh, and Eric with the camera, we were just walking around downtown LA and, uh, and it turned out great. Yeah. Um, about 10 years ago, 10, about 10 years ago, or even longer. I'm not sure. Maybe. No, 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 no. About 10, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And then, so, and then we, and then I helped you, I shot some of your, uh, Mise rocks. Yes. Videos. Yes. Which was a pretty great. Um, yeah, they are. I'm going to put that link on. Oh yeah. That was cool. Yes. I've that, forgotten that. That was really cool. Because, and you edited them too. And I edited them. Yeah. But that was really cool because we, the things we did, uh, it was crazy. You remember we went up to the Capitol, um, Capitol records building and spoke with the guard. And we buzzed them. Yeah. We buzzed them and you legit pitched, uh, like it was on camp. Like it, that part wasn't fake. Yeah. You actually pitched to like, um, get your music to them. Right. Yeah. And you like played the guitar in front of them. Uh, and then, um, but my favorite part of that, of, of shooting that stuff was, uh, I don't know if you remember, but, um, we went to, uh, I forget what, 
happened like in that episode, but we went to a, um, an LA food truck. It wasn't a food truck. It was like a vendor thing. Yes. And on camera, you didn't know what you were getting, but like you got a, a Coca-Cola and, um, and what we found out later was uh pig skin. Um, yeah. And it was like, it was dry pig skin. And, uh, and you didn't know what it was, of course. And so we like, you got it and we walked on camera and, and you quickly ate and drank. And um, I feel like, I feel like you almost threw it up. There was like a moment where you like coughed and like, I felt like you were going to, cause you just shoved it in your mouth, but that was great. And cause after the fact, because we figured out what you were actually eating. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. That is really, I'm really happy about them. Yeah. And they're still on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, then okay. we did a uh, little bit of filming of Helsinki Boulevard. Uh, Helsinki Boulevard. What was... It was the other web series that I have. It's on YouTube. But I was going to do a second season. So we shot a couple of sh- scenes for that. But the second season never really came. But you, you, can be seen the, you can be seen in the last episode of the first season. Oh, okay. I, God, I forgot that one. You're you're driving your car oh, and I wake up yes. in the back seat. Yes, yes. Okay, I remember now. And then we yeah. shot at your apartment. Yep. Yep. The the feature. Uh, no, oh, yes. No. But we also shot one scene for um Helsinki Boulevard. Oh, okay. It never came out, but there there was the lady actor there too. Right, right. Yeah, well and then so And for our feature, someone somewhere. Someone somewhere, yeah. And you were kind enough to, we were able to use your apartment and your cat. Yeah. Luna. Luna. She was prominent. She yes. was like, she was so, and I saw it afterwards and she was so in it that I was like, dang, I should have gotten some residuals here. Like she was, and she was, but I saw in the credits, she was, uh, she was in there. Yes. It was great. Luna the cat. Yep. And I, you were amazing in it. Oh, it thank was, you. It was, it was great to see, um, you know, cause you'd done a lot of comedic stuff too, but that was more serious and that was yeah. really cool to see. Well, thank you. Mm, yeah. Um, and then, but, but, um, uh, I think we're forgetting, um, I think you did something else. No, maybe that's it. Maybe we're forget- Any, Anyways. Yeah. So we, I think that's it. Long story short, we've done a lot of cool stuff together. So, yes. Yeah. 17 years ago, we moved here. Yep. We're still here. Well, I, I'm back. How do you, uh, what is your 17 years of in LA? What is your... What is your feeling of Los Angeles? It it gets uh, it reduces. It wears you down for sure. No, no, no. I yes, it does. No, I, I was actually just um, driving here, mm. so I, I was ten years away, but I've been now here seven years again. Mm. Um, I noticed that you get used to it. Mm. Like I was driving here, that okay. Oh, by the way, I'm driving in LA, and I'm seeing stuff that. If I was here on a holiday, I would be taking photos, but you get used to it. Oh yeah. When I, I, when I see the Hollywood sign, I'm like, oh, it's whatever. <laughs> or like, you do like that. And I stay away from Hollywood and Highland. I Why? Just, I, I, I was, um, I was helping, uh, I was shooting. Um, oh no, I was, I was directing a commercial, uh, for a water, um, water product. And we were shooting right there. And we were getting um, people to sample the water. Yeah. And uh, they were just really mean people. And you see in the news every so often things happen there. Like there's just a lot of, it's not the best place in LA. Yeah. Uh, And I lived close by there for years. Oh, you did? Yes. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So it's not great. I I consider it kind of the armpit of of, uh, LA. Yeah. But there's a lot of great places. Chinese theater. It's all, I mean, a lot of historic, amazing places, but it's, uh, it is, um, possibly the butthole of Los Angeles. So, but you moved, edit this out. No, yeah. <laughs> you moved somewhere nice. Yeah. Okay. Actually. Yeah. You ask about LA. I really love it being here, but it, it feels weird to get used to it. And it, yeah, it, it, it's, um, it's, you, you forget, you forget that it is a great place to be. It's just, you have to be reminded there's a lot of really amazing artists here. Um, it's not as, you know, it gets the rap of like being superficial. Um, and yes, there's reality stuff and there's Kardashians, whatever, all over the, um, and Melrose, all, you know, a lot of superficial things, but like boiled down, like we have as many amazing artists as any other 
you know, city like New York or something. It's just less gritty in a way. Um, but it's, you know, I, I, I loved it. I hated it. I loved it again. You know, you go, it goes up and down. So, um, well, we moved to West side now, okay. a lot, like a year ago. So it's weird because I'm, I don't see Hollywood that much. It's, we live in a suburban type neighborhood. It feels very different. Mm, yeah. But you moved away from LA. How far away do you live? Uh, about 30 minutes. But again, that's the thing with LA is you're almost about 30 minutes from everything. Yes. So that's, you know, and you have to get out of LA to afford anything, even rent or, or buy or whatever. So it's, uh, it's tricky. So, yeah, but it's, you know, it's an LA, you know, I still say I live in LA, but I'm like 30 minutes away in Minnesota where I'm from. If I drove 30, 45 minutes, it took me to get here. If I drove 45 minutes, I'd be in Wisconsin. Like the, the drive distance that we're okay with is very different than what we're okay with here. Um, it's yeah. You could drive to a different state for the amount of time I drive to Long Beach. Yeah. So how, how does it feel like living where you live now? Like it's good. I like it. It's greater I, LA area, but it's another city. Greater LA. And it's, I thought I'd even, you know, even coming here, I feel like it's like old stomping grounds. I used to live near here and stuff. So it's, there's like nostalgia, but, yeah. um, and I feel a little out of the mix a little bit, but, um, but it's okay. I mean, the internet, it's, uh, we're everywhere all at once. And where do you work now? Well, uh, I know where you work, but can you tell where you work now? Uh, yeah, I, I work, um, at, uh, Activision Blizzard doing video editing. Yes. Uh, for the esports, So that's, uh, Overwatch League and, uh, Call of Duty League. And it's fun. I can be creative, you know, and I, I, I love, I love <clears throat> editing. It's, tedious uh sometimes but it you can really create some amazing things so is it competition so like what's the actual thing uh so it's esports you know they're yeah. like they're they play in front games, of a computer yeah. yeah they're in front of a computer they're you know doing the things and uh sometimes in the setups they're you know they're like say like you have like five tables or ten tables and they're like against each other like this those monitors you know, monitors. yeah, but now, and that's during the pandemic, but more, more now they're shifting to, um, to in-person again. So like stadium, uh, style setup stage and everything, um, call of duty league is, is, uh, we, they just, we just finished uh champs, which yeah. is, uh, the super bowl of the league. And so it was, um, it was a, a big event here in Los Angeles. Um, and it was, uh, it was nice. A lot of, a lot of people. But you're a filmmaker. You've been a filmmaker for 20 years. How yeah. is it being a filmmaker in LA or indie filmmaker? It's uh, yeah, it's fun. I mean, it's um, you're you're your own um, worst enemy because <laughs> you uh, and maybe that's acting too. Um, I was expecting you're gonna say you're your own boss. It's great. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> you're your own your, boss. I, you're your own worst enemy. Yeah, it, because you 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 um. You just, um, you know, you, you, it, with everything, you're the hurdles of, okay, this is because doing, doing it is tough. Like you're creating something from nothing. So, yes. um, writing it, which, which I do as well. So I, I write it and I, um, uh, cast it and then, uh, in a lot of ways produce it though. I've worked with some amazing producers, um, who are much better at it than I am, um, and so, uh, so I do all that and, and it's, but it, it's just hard to, and also in LA, it's, it's a little tricky to get to that next level as well, because, you know, th I could shoot something. That's the trick is I could shoot some, you and I could go out and out back now and shoot something cool. And that would be great. And that would feed our creative energy. What's tricky is trying to get it out there to more people. Film festivals are amazing. And uh, I've been to, a, thankfully been to a lot of them. Um, and, but, and, and I love, uh, seeing people seeing my stuff. That's like the best thing. Um, but it's like, how you, how can you get it to more people? So, you know, I was very close with a, with a feature uh, project, um, that had a attachments, um, you know, 
Jeff Daniels was reading it, that kind of stuff. And was he was reading it. Yeah. And uh, Joel McHale, like some really cool people. Yeah. Um, but the trick always is um, the managers of those actors are like, okay, is it funded? And then investors who are interested are like, okay, who's acting in it? And there's, there's, some would say you need to lie to get one of them on board. It's like, oh, they're in it, you know, but I just, I'm not good at that. I'm not good at like the, pro not producing is not lying, but, uh, you know, <laughs> you, you have to like bend things and twist things. And so I'm just, I'm not good at um, that stuff. So it got, um, it got interest from actors, interest from investors, but, you know, you have to get people to get on the train and that's hard. And so I, I did a proof of concept for this, uh, for this, um, this was at the time called relationship status. And now it's called you, you, me and the internet. And so the one that I watched, is that the proof of uh, concept? Yeah, yeah, that is. So, uh, and the, it's online. It's YouTube? online. Yeah. That's you, my can you say the name again? Uh, you, me and the internet. And it's, uh, it's on our YouTube, uh, Chispa Productions. Yes. So C-H-I-S as in Sam P-A Productions. Yes. And, so um, you did that. Yeah. And that was a proof of concept for investors. You know, they, a producer was like, shoot a scene, you know, and, and I, I had the scene exactly. But then as a filmmaker, I was like, well, let me go, we shot it in Minnesota. Let me go and, um, let me shoot a little more. Uh, like, let me, sh let me, let me get something out of this too. Let, let me try to come back with the short. And, um, and funny enough, I, I ended up casting a, a husband and wife who did not tell me that they were husband and wife. Uh, they all, you know, a bunch of people send me their YouTube, uh, real, uh, their YouTube, um, audition. Yes. Um, which is self tape, self tape. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, they sent me that and, uh, they, they did not tell me that they were husband and wife. I casted them or I casted both of them. And then I told the, um, uh, one, I told, uh, I told him, um, that, um, that I need to talk to the, the female lead. Uh, about rehearsal. And he's like, no, you don't have to do that. I'm <laughs> married to her. So it was great. And uh, so they're amazing. They're uh, wonderful actors. Um, are they Minnesota actors? They are, they are, they're everywhere. They're, um, they're currently, I think in um, Michigan, I think yeah. they, they moved, but they were, they're from Minnesota. Uh, and I guess um, what I'm asking, did you fly anyone from LA? No. So yes. I, I don't have that big a budget. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I would have flown you over. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh no, they're they're the Minnesota, uh, very talented. Everybody that's the thing. And all these all these uh cities other than LA, you know, LA has amazing talent, but there's also amazing talent in all these other cities. Um and they have a film program, give or take, like the city, you know, helps cultivate the film program. Um, not a, to the extent that they can or 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 maybe should. But um, amazing talent, amazing filmmakers too, amazing production uh, people, producers, um, and so we so we shot that, and and I came back to LA and pitched it, and of course, you know it didn't uh, it didn't. A lot of people are, you know, they're they're in it until they have to open their wallets, you know, which is always hard. Uh, and as an artist, of course, it's a, it is very difficult to get investment in a project that you don't know, you have to prove that it'll get, um, um, you know, some kind of profit. So, um, and with, which is very unlikely in most of the indie films. And it's unlikely in a lot of them, um, unless we had one film that we shot in downtown called Recalculating, which is yes. also on YouTube. And, uh, that was a husband and wife as well. Um, and, uh, that, was in a film festival here in downtown here here in LA called Dances with Films, and they uh, they had a program where they brought the films to uh, Virgin Airlines, and so that got into Virgin Airlines that short uh, because short films are great for for airlines. I can imagine like you can just watch some a group of shorts, and um, that's great. So that that got in there, but of course that wasn't like there was no profit there. But it was got, there any money? No, no, but it got to more eyes. So yeah. that was cool for me. That was cool for an investor. That's not necessarily cool. So, um, so that's a trick is getting in, but I, I, that's still, even though 
nothing happened from it. And it was, uh, it was, um, you know, shot in the dark. It was, it's my, the best thing that I've done so far. Um, I've done, I've, and I've done some things since and I love them. Can yeah. I ask about something about that? So is relationship status, which is the name of the feature film, are you, is it done or uh, are you still trying no, to make I'm, it? Well, so that, in? so, so it changed from you, it's to you, me and the internet. And, um, now I'm thinking this might be in the future, but, um, cause I'm trying to do a different project right now. Um, but that I still think about as a potential TV show. Yes. Um, you know, because, and, and again, as a filmmaker, you, you have to, we're too often told in film school, like the feature film is the thing and it is the thing of course, but maybe we need to be, um, adaptable. Streaming is a thing. So maybe we need to be making more TV stuff, you know, cause TV is, is, is just as narrative and, and time consuming and, and, and feature filmy as you, you get. So, yeah. um, you know, some of those, some just one episode is, is, is a, is a story and a whole film. So, um, so I want to come back to that at some point, maybe in a, as a feature or as a, a, a TV show perhaps, but I'm trying to focus on something else. Um, which I think I've always been thinking about, um, called it's, it's a, it's a TV pilot called garden noir and it's, um, I was acting in that. Yeah, that's right. That that's what I forgot about. Yeah. So me we, too. Yeah. So you, you acted in, um, in a, in a pitch, uh, video pitch we, we, uh, Eric and I did. So, uh, about five years ago, five years. Yeah. Cause, and that's the thing when you're, when you're a film person, when you, when you're a filmmaker, film person, you always have, you have a lot of stories that you want to do, but ha but can't do at the moment. So like garden war I've had for since, since, you know, probably film school, I was thinking about the idea and then it came together as a noir re uh, recently, 10 years, 10, 15 years ago, maybe when I was here in LA. And <clears throat> so that one, that one's fun because it's a noir. You can get really weird with the noirs. You can get a voiceover in your head, which I, I, you know, some would say that it's, um, it's, uh, it's uh, lazy writing where you have a narration, but, uh, I think it's fun when you can do it. M my favorite film, Amelie, you know, does a narration of course. So, so it, um, so that's fine. So like with this noir, I can do some weird nor narration. It gets into, um, sort of an underworld of, uh, plant fetish, plant love, you know, like this, uh, it, you know, it, well, and it starts with like, a um, a murder of course, as an or, uh, with a, um, a pine tree seed that grew in somebody's lung, which happened in 2009 in Russia. Uh, it, this actually happened. And, um, you know, there's one thing as a filmmaker, you tuck these ideas in your head and you're like, Oh, that's interesting. That's, and then sometimes they come together. And so with Garden Noir, it came together and it was like, I like Noirs. I have this weird plant idea. And then this pine tree grew in the sky. So it kind of just comes together at times. And, uh, this one is, and, and I'm sort of doing that right now. So it's, uh, so yeah, that's the idea. Like it starts with a murder pine tree grows in a guy's lung and our detective has to solve the crime. And that gets him deeper into a a weird underworld that he, that he has to traverse, which we didn't know about, which, you know, is kind of into the, the plant, uh, the plant love, you know, the, uh, which, it, you know, uh, different types, like, you know, I don't know if I, there's a lot of different weird things, you know, it's like, um, so in the, in the, you might say in the pornography world, you have all these different types of weird fetishes, right? <laughs> so think of it that, but, but plants, plants, that's all. That's I think I saw someone married a tree or something like that. Did somebody do that? I, I, oh, I'm I, getting I, a yeah, feeling. I, I think you're right. I think I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. But someone must have married the tree. Yeah. Oh, so th does it happen in, what's the world that it happens world and time? Well, so I, you know, it happens in modern time, although, although we're going to, you know, we're gonna, that's the trick is like you, it happens in modern time, but it happens in a, 
it, it might not be a familiar time, let's say. So, uh, you know, we, we just won't have, we won't, you know, in the scenes, we won't have phones, we, you know, that necessarily, or we might have, it, there's a way to kind of shoot. And I'm still working this out with like, with uh, you, me and the internet. It's, it's about a town with no internet. And a lot of people would ask me that too, is like, oh, it's must be based in the nineties or eighties or something I'm like, no, it's modern time. Um, and then they're like, well, how do you get, get over this and that and that? It's like, it's just a town with no internet. So with Garden Noir, it's, um, well, we're not going to see modern cars that'll take us out of it, but still working out sort of, you know, the setting is downtown LA in the dark shadows of as a noir is, but, um, I think we're just not going to highlight the technology at all. We're not going to really focus on it. Yeah. Um, we're still in st again, still working out like the, um, the, 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 uh, the, what's it called? The decor and things. And, and, but I, yeah, I don't know that because if it's in, if it's in a, a different time period, you know, budget goes up. Because I know I need, you need a car that's, uh, older. So we had a cool moment when we shot the pilot or test footage. I was walking in Hollywood in front of Wells Fargo, big uh, light board. Yeah. And it was raining. Yeah. Which it usually does not, no. it usually doesn't rain in LA. No. It was it, a weird night. It was a perfect night for that. Yeah. And then we had the, uh, like the digital flowers on your face. It was really, really nice. Yes. Yeah. So w how is that project now? What's uh, the stage? Yeah. So now it's, so I'm co-directing it with Eric Claw. Yeah. Uh, our mutual friend. And, uh, who was our roommate too. Was our roommate. Yep. And yeah. went the same film school in Miami yep. with you. Yeah. Yeah. And we, uh, uh, we're going to do that. And so right now we're in sort of the pitch phase We're we're, um, reaching out to. Sorry. Sort of, have you written it? Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You it's, have scripts. Yeah. Oh, actual scripts. Not oh yeah. Mentioned. I've, it, this is a project like I've had for a while. So I've, I've had the short, I've had the cut up web series idea. Cause that's where I was going with it. But then, uh, now I have the pilot, uh, and now I'm just, I just need to, you know, change the pilot a little bit. So I need to change the other episodes a little bit, but what's yeah. the length and how many episodes? It's about 30 pages, 30 minutes. So roughly a shorter TV series. Yes. Uh, and you have several episodes, several episodes. Yeah. Cause it goes through, you know, a lot of, um, it, it, you know, it, it reveals the, 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 the mur you know, the murder, which is, is a, I'll say is a really unique outcome to this story. This yeah. Specific story. Well, this so, is cool. So you have the scripts ready. Mm -hmm. So, sorry, I interrupted you. So what's the stage now? Yeah. So we're going to do, we're going to pitch to the Netflixes of, of the world. And, um, at the same time, I think we're going to go forward with a Kickstarter because, and that's going back to filmmaking. It's like you, and, and my own personal hurdle is, um, I think I, I'm tired of waiting. And so, um, I want to, I want to do both. I want to be getting it going, doing a Kickstarter and trying to get as much, you know, as much as we can, but just enough to film the pilot, you know? And, uh, so not much. Um, and then, uh, and then at the same time going forward with pitching to the big networks. So why are you pitching the networks instead of uh, production companies? Um, I'm not saying you're wrong, but I'm just asking. No, that's true. I don't, um, because there are production companies that have, you know, the, 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 the through line to a Netflix type place. Yeah. Uh, you're right. That's their, yeah. Thing. I, things I need to do. That's, that's what, that's my biggest fear as a filmmaker is the things I don't know that I don't know that I'm not doing. Yeah. And though that's one of them that I'm, I'm like, Oh, why don't you be and usually it's friends that, that are just like randomly like, you should do this. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah. And then most times it's it's annoyances. You know, you should you should get your camera and do something in your backyard. I'm like, yeah, I should. But uh, but but yeah, sometimes it's it's insightful uh, stuff. I have the same problem if I pitch something. Well, I don't pitch much stuff here, but if I pitch something in Finland, yeah, it's always. If, if the company already is in with the network, it's easier. Yeah. Cause I don't know if you, I don't know if people know, but, uh, Miska is kind of a big deal in Finland. I don't know if people know. <laughs> I that. think it's mainly Finnish people watching. Did you talk about your soap, soap opera? 
that I was in the Salad at Elam at Secret Live Soap Opera 20, 22 years ago. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. It, it's, it's still on, Soap <laughs> still, Opera. Yes. Have you been ever invited back or is your character dead, but not dead? I'm not dead. Oh, my okay. character, I was, um, I was at the beach with my girlfriend in the show and my mom called from a countryside that my dad had fallen off from the roof of the cattle house. Mm. So I needed to go back home to help with the cows. And that's how your character ended? Yeah. <laughs> so, he, so he could be, he could be still out there. You I'm know, still back. alive. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. I, I, I would, I would go. Yeah. I don't know if I would move to Finland for 20 years to be in that because yeah. I have foot in LA, but I would go there for some time very happily. Because yeah, even if they killed you, you know, soap operas, they just, you have a beard now, you can just come back and say, well, I'm his twin brother, uh, you know, coming back. So I could actually play two characters, him you and could. the twin. But yeah, I'm, I'm not dead. Keke is the name of the character. Nice. Keke, he's not dead. He's just farming out in the country. I guess, well, we're going to find out. What it is. <laughs> I have a, the I, audience I, needs to find out. What's going on? I would like to get rid of the beer, beer, not beer, but beard for a change. Ah, but I, I, I'm doing these self tapes mm. almost every day. So if I do a self tape, I'm not allowed to change my look. A self tape for somebody specifically, so, so pitch, it, so uh, an audition for something specific. Yeah, I do about well, I do about three of those per week. Okay, because I must submit to stuff every day. Like I'm doing two today. I just did one, mm. and then I'm doing one in the afternoon. Okay. So it's just different parts and the headshots that me, I often use is the one that I have a beard mm. and there's quite a lot of a bearded guy, this and that. So okay. I'm look, You're gonna get I'm not of... happy with the, how scruffy this is. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I'm, I'm I... having it for the money. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, it looks good. So I don't know, but I, I like your, like if you, you shave it, you look uh, 20 years younger. <laughs> So, but I like uh, this look too. Question about, you know, acting and, and, and what you're doing is, and I'm always wondering, a little bit back to the, you mean the internet, uh, because of the content, which is an anti-internet stance. But yes. then the, basically the story is like seeing the good in the internet. So I, I'm on both sides. I can see the bad of it. Um, yeah. And I can see the good. So, um. I'm wondering, like, as an actor, do you, you know, do you feel the pressure to like, you know, have an Instagram, have a TikTok, have like, be a presence on social media as an actor? Not as an actor, I don't feel that. But since I have the podcast and I do comedy and I have my own fi f indie films and stuff, mm. I feel for that it's important to be online. Yeah. But if I was just an actor, I, I don't think that would be... Yeah. But I think many actors get cast, especially in indie films, because of their following. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. Like you would probably, if you have two good actors and one of them has 100,000 followers, you would probably prefer like that. Like Miska, sorry. How many followers? I'm, I can't do it. I'm sorry. Well, you have 20 followers? No. no yeah. Can't. Yeah, you're right. No, that is a factor. And it, yes. it makes me a little sick to my stomach, but I get it. It's... Uh, it, it, popularity it's like you know you're you're a small film you need attention where you can get it yeah so <clears throat> and even big big actors they give old times they used to give magazine interviews yeah and, right same thing yes yeah because i you know with with the with the i and i i think as a filmmaker i've got to be on it too and i'm i have to, we all have some fun on it it hits the dopamine and all that uh for like you know you feel like you're doing something even though you're <laughs> posting an old film or whatever. Um, there's, uh, there's some degree of, of being, of, of, you know, being around and being, um, present with, with everything. I just, um, I don't know. I just, uh, I, I'd, I would rather just not be on it, but I will say that on TikTok and even Instagram reels, there's a lot of really creative people. Like I'm, from a filmmaking standpoint too, I, I, I see some people doing videos on there and, um, it, um, it definitely hits the film maker vibe where like, 
why am I not doing something like this? I know why I'm not because I'm not an actor, but like, I'm not great. I'm, I'm one of those filmmakers that like, you know, I would rather be behind the camera, not just behind the camera. I would rather just, you know, you just see my film, not me, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and so, um, so, well, so, anyway. so something that came to my mind when you just said that, that instead of thinking that Instagram reels or TikToks, it's a promotional tool. Mm-hmm. I think we could think that, no, that's the actual product. Like, yeah, this is, I'm doing this 30 second film. Yeah. Yeah. And it, so it's interesting as an actor, it's like, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's things you could do, I guess, on there where like, you know, you may not be getting into films right now, but it's like, oh, you know, my TikTok is whatever. It's time though, too. It's time out of your life. Life is, uh, gets you, you know, especially in the pandemic, it's like, you can't do much. And, um, and so I think everybody like, I don't know, I feel like TikTok was a good avenue for a lot of people during that time too. Cause you could just, it's just you, you and the camera. So, um, but yeah, I have a love, hate relationship with social media. Um, follow me, follow <laughs> me on, on the things. Well, and, and I, I do the flushed, um, pod, well, I do a podcast too, but then mostly the flushed, flushed. Yeah, the book. This is a book. Oh, Miska. You, you've got to, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it, so I do that too. And that's, what is this? That, well, I, I know, but can you tell me? <laughs> that came from, um, my hatred of public bathrooms. Uh, I was at a company, a corporate, you know, big company, you have public bathrooms and the nuance of, of, of just the do's and don'ts, the urinal etiquette, um, and, uh, and, uh, so it, it deals with us. Uh, so we, we, we did the website and we, we put it all in a book. Um, I, and that's, I'm horrible with promotion. So I hadn't been promoting it. And then I hadn't promoted, I didn't promote it much for years and, uh, pandemic happened and I really didn't promote it. And so I'm, you know, <laughs> I didn't promote it, but then I even then really, I really did didn't do it. <laughs> um, then we're doing, we're doing a second book soon. Yeah. So we have a lot of the stuff for that. And so it, yeah, it deals with, um, a lot of what guys go through with, with the bathroom is urinal etiquette. Um, I hate good. So I, you know, I am of the mind where I, I, I will take a number two in a public bathroom. I got, I went to that point yes. where I just got to do it. Some people race home for it. This is before I work from home. So, um, we'll race to the bathroom at home or whatever. But, uh, so I don't like, people going in the stall next to me, you know, and there's things you just don't do. And so we, we covered that, cover that in the book, you know, and in comedic ways. So like people don't wash their hands after they use the bathroom. I've witnessed that. Um, a lot of, a lot of strange things that that happen. One time I, um, was using the bathroom. So that's, I'm just saying that's also a Facebook page and an Instagram page where you do like little skits and stuff. Yeah, the flushed uh, Instagram, YouTube. Um, so it's bathroom related comedic content. Yeah, yeah. So we do. There was one point where, like, I, and so for example, like one of. But the, I interrupted you. Oh no no yeah. it's fine. Uh, one of the things we one of the things we talk about too is like, a lot of people don't know men know, but um, uh, do you know about the um, the, uh, you know, on the in the urinals you have those little um, seashells. There's a oh yeah where where to aim the seashell yeah the the little bee it's yes. either a seashell or bee on the porcelain of the urinal yes and a lot of people know women especially don't know this but like a lot of men don't know this that they put that there for a reason because men will target something <laughs> yeah I know yeah if we see a target we'll target it so yeah. like that's that's what that's why they put it there yeah and so we that's why we cover that in the book you know we we talk. Uh, and this is my ignorance of it, but like we talk about how women, women will talk like crazy in the bathroom to other women, men, generally we stay quiet. And so, um, there are a lot of weird things like that, that we cover in the book. And, um, uh, it's our, you, you know, were saying Bible. you were bathroom Bible. You were saying yeah. that weird things. And once you were starting to tell a story about someone. Um, yeah. So I was in the, sort of the corporate, uh, b- bathroom at work at years ago. And, <clears throat> you know, I have, I'm doing my business in the bathroom and like, uh, I, um, 
<laughs> I mean, you know, sometimes noises get out. So whatever it happened, there was a guy next to me and, uh, he was making noises too. And like, we were almost like trumpeting to each other, <laughs> but anyways, that's not the real shock. The, the shock to me was, uh, my ID badge, you know, that you'd carry at yeah. this job was, you know, on the floor next to my pants, which was clipped to my pants. It was under the stall door or under the stall wall. So anybody that could glance at me, they could see the ID badge. So they knew who was doing the stuff. Yes. And then when that happened too, I was mortified. And then I got up, got, you know, did my stuff. And then as I was leaving, my boss was coming in and he's like, oh, Peter Bean. Yeah, everybody loves to say my full name. So, yeah. <laughs> so they so it's like, oh, Peter Bean. And it echoed throughout the bathroom. So now anybody that didn't know it was me that made those noises, because in the stall, you're, you're, you're a stranger. Nobody yeah. knows. Uh, now, now everybody knew. So it was like those kind of moments that happened in the bathroom. It was just fascinating to me. So I got with a, 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 a artist friend, uh, Chris Macy, and um, he, he did a lot of the art here. And um, was he a roommate too? Uh, he was a roommate. Yeah. Yeah. He was, was he your roommate? If we overlap for very little time. Okay. But yeah. we may not have. Yeah. So he, so he was a roommate he's a really talented artist. Um, he did a lot of the art in this and, um, uh, And now, you know, I have an, an additional artist that I know that I married that is, is also doing art for, for us now. So she's going to be doing a lot of the second book. Um, yes. So, yeah, but that's pretty much it. It's, uh, it's, uh, you know, I, and I'll ask you this question, Miss, because, um, and this is an example of the stuff we do on there is, uh, you know, do you, do you, have you ever peed in the shower? Yes. Okay. N n not many times, but yeah, I, I have. Okay. And do you, do you do it? Um, are you, do you do it less since you've, um, you know, been in your relationship? Oh, I have only done it like a couple of times ever. Oh, ever. Okay. Yeah. Well, I do it. Yeah. That's, I just, I just do that. If I need to, I, yeah, I just do it. It's, uh, I don't think there's any harm, although we need to do a little research into this because I don't know if the plumbing is is up to that task. I don't know, but it's that kind of content that we we yeah. do. Yeah. So, well, the American bathrooms, especially in the office buildings, are very standard. But when you go to at least Finland, the bathrooms can be anything, and they are definitely much more private. And you have bidets, I'm sure. Yes, the and bidets are like with bidet. Are you, we have bidet showers? What? A small shower that is next to the toilet and you can use Oh like a hand okay. shower. You just Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And All then right. you can wash your ass. <laughs> Got it. But we Finland doesn't really have bidet bowls. I think uh, France have. Okay. What, what are you talking with bidet? I'm just saying bidet like so in the US there's uh we don't have generally bidets, but like uh you can get attachments onto bidets. Yes. So that's what I'm I think if nobody's used a bidet um here in the u.s especially i love it once you do it you're like you up until now you've just been wiping with dry on dry yeah it's dry and dry and you expect to clean it i know you expect that that's gonna clean it it's bonkers and so um uh it, when you do a bidet it's like that's it like it's you barely have to wipe sorry i'm getting too excited no um, I, i i feel strongly about that too i feel very strongly Yes. So it's, uh, it's something that, uh, I, I like Oscar, do you do a bidet? I've never done a bidet. See, that's what I'm talking <laughs> about. Like people don't. Oscar is our technician question. today. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I wonder if he is going to ask us to cut this. <laughs> I will if need. <laughs> um, yeah, he's, he doesn't, yeah. Want know, he doesn't want people knowing his, uh, toilet, um, habits, but, uh, but yeah, so bidets are amazing. Get a bidet. So Get we, a bidet. <laughs> Please. The kind of bidet we have a bidet handheld shower. Uh, we got it from Home Depot. Yeah, I think the cheap. Well, the the cheap versions. Um, you probably have Tushy. The, Tushy okay. is a. They're not sponsoring us. They should be. Um, Tushy is is great because it's a quick attachment on your yeah. toilet. Um, and uh, and they're they're amazing. They're cheap. It's like it's a hundred bucks. Um, so it's it's not cheap and not expensive. So. And you, it's an easy hookup to your water source. Yeah. 
Uh, you know, I don't think hot water straight away is a practicality. So you, you get used to the, the cold blast. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, sorry, I digress. But the Amer- Americans' corporate bathrooms are pretty non-private. Yes. Because you can see the other person's feet. Their feet. You yep. can basically see from the door. And that's crack. that's one of the pages in this too, is like the 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 crack. Like some cracks in in install doors are bigger than others. Yes. Some you can like just look right in. And so we do you know, so with the flushed we do from since I'm a filmmaker, we do some skits too. Like we've yes. done um several skits with uh um you know, somebody peeking through the door, like I see you, you know, yes. and like just highlighting my favorite skit we did was a series about, uh, it was like a, almost like a blues clues in the bathroom. It was like Elliot's, blues clues. Yeah. It was like, I don't know what that is. Oh, it's a, it was a famous, um, uh, uh, kids show Yes, here in the U S like several years ago. And, uh, it's, it's like, um, you know, a guy in the bathroom with a little puppet talking to him. Yeah. And then he's like, uh, he, he's like, um, you know, Elliot doesn't know which urinal to use. Like there's somebody here and there's somebody here. Yeah. And then he like turns to the camera. He's like, which urinal, which urinal do you think Elliot should use? And you know, you hear the kids like, oh, you should use number yeah. three, number three. So that kind of thing. It's that sort of format. So I love it. Yeah. It's we have, fun. We have two minutes. Okay. We have one and a half minutes. Okay. What should we do? <laughs> what should we in our last? Yes. <laughs> okay. So can I see the plants? Huh? Can I see the plants? No, that's, we're still making it. Yes. And no, then, I meant the plants that you had brought some plants. Oh, I didn't. That we, we, oh, that, that we, we could, could use. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, we're not. Is there something that I forgot to ask? Um, no. No, I think it's good. Should people move to LA if they have dreams? Uh, yes. I think um, you can do it. You can... <laughs> You can do, you can do it from where you are. You can, I think there's enough of a film program where you are yeah. to do it. So don't not do it, um, in your area. You, you can, you don't need to be in LA, uh, to, from an acting standpoint, I think you do, right? Yeah. Uh, or well, it helps you a lot. There's more opportunities. Here. There's more opportunities if you're in LA as an actor, as a filmmaker, I think you can do it from anywhere and, um, you can be pitching to the big studios uh, remotely, especially work from home. Yeah, I mean, I love LA. See, LA has diversity. So you don't artists. need you don't need to move there. You don't need to, but LA is amazing. We have beaches, mountains. You know, you, an hour away, you you have a beach. An hour away, you have mountains. It's great. Uh, <laughs> it's great. It's you know, you'll just have a love hate relationship. To it and your own you're your own own worst enemy yeah and you are your own worst enemy um don't let yourself don't let the negative in your head get get over you because that's what i'm that's what i'm personally trying to get over right now is sometimes the 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 words in your head are are speaking negatively like oh what am i doing with my life you know i haven't done a i haven't done a film in x amount of time Look at all these TikTok people being more creative than me. You know, it's like that kind of stuff gets in your head. And so you can apply that to acting or anything, but just not letting... Peter, we need to stop. (laughs) Follow me. Follow me. Where? The studio Um, time is ending. Instagram. Uh, Nerd Filmmaker. Instagram. Or uh, shit. YouTube. I guess YouTube. um, I'm going to put the link. Chispa Production. I'm going to put the the link. link. Okay. Thank you, Peter Bean. Thank you, Miss. Thank you. We Thank made you. it. We made it. We did it. Thank you. Next.